Hello everybody, welcome in. Today we're talking about Chainlink. This is one you guys wanted me to analyze for a long time, so here we go. Obviously, the challenge about math, money, and freedom, and this is a detailed analysis as usual. And if at the end of this you're not convinced to make Chainlink part of your portfolio, that would be surprising <laughs> because for the first time ever, my price predictions are much higher than everybody else's. So I don't know what's wrong. Hope I didn't make a mistake. I doubt it. But anyway, uh, feedback, welcome regarding my price predictions for Chainlink down in the comments below. And of course, this is not investment advice. This is edutainment. So let's uh, not waste any more time. So quick review. We've shuffled the token valuation process around a little bit. So what it does ranking, industry disruption, value props, tech and developers, and a new category called tokenomics, which is so important to understand exactly how much supply there is and how it's distributed. Then we look at the ecosystem, growth and longevity, risks, and of course, the best part that you all love, price predictions. And I'll have timestamps as well down below as well. So a quick piece here. Uh, the background, uh, the founder is Sergei Nazarov, and he's been a pioneer in the smart contract space since the beginning of smart contracts. In fact, he founded a company called smartcontract.com. Now, his token, Chainlink, uh, was launched in ICO in 2017, and it officially launched in 2019. So it's only a couple of years old, but the adoption has been widespread. And the vision is very simple, to empower smart contracts to be able to tie in basically the outside world with the blockchain world in a proofless, tamper-proof manner. And we'll dig more into exactly what that means in a few minutes. So what it does, Chainlink is a decentralized Oracle service. And that means, think of, I, I refer to it as the blockchain police that brings data in from the outside world onto a blockchain. Obviously, a blockchain to be what it is, it needs to be locked away from the outside world. Now, this allows API access to anything. For example, it could be market prices, interest rates, storage of a certain good, in fact, storage of a certain token or money, GPS data, Internet of Things information, supply chain data, you name it. Now, what makes it very unique is Chainlink is a decentralized network and it's completely trustless and it works with access of off-chain data as well as cross-chain data, which is so critical and that's why this is such a powerful platform. So let's uh, talk a little bit about exactly what it does. This is a simple illustration that shows you how Chainlink can operate, the central boxes here, and how they can tie, for example, to any API system. For example, it could pull in things like temperature or beacons or other types of transmitters or security protocols or market data and put it into a smart contract. For example, it could be a trigger that would trigger an insurance policy or a contract to be executed and paid for when something is delivered. And of course, it also ties into payments anywhere. They have relationships with Swift, MasterCard, Visa, PayPal, and other big names, which we'll talk about later as well. So it's very, very impressive. And it's not a theoretical thing. It's something that's in operation right now and growing very, very fast. So how it plays, so Chainlink seeks to be the most reliable, obviously, and the most widely adopted Oracle service, which it is today. And the incentives basically are geared to obtain off-chain data from external APIs to meet requests, again, to support smart contracts. And what's also very interesting is the reputation of the Oracle is stored on a public blockchain, which means the people that manage it really have to compete for data accuracy and reliability. And this is the real value behind Chainlink because the operators are extremely reliable and accurate. And they've spent a long time building up their reputation. So it's not something they're gonna just throw away or risk. And that's what makes this extremely powerful. Now, in terms of ranking and where they stack up against other oracles, you will see, it stands out here, of all the tokens uh, by market cap ranked, Chainlink is now number 14 with about an $11 billion market cap. But the next best competitor is ranked number 90 with about an 866 
million dollar market cap. So Chainlink is 13 times larger than the next competitor. There's some other names as well that many have referred to me like Band Protocol and Augur, etc. Uh, exec RLC. But really, these are uh, very, very small players in comparison to Chainlink. So they are way out there. They are the biggest, the best, and the dominant player in this marketplace. So let's look at the target industries that they play in. Basically, they work in the de decentralized Oracle space, as you mentioned. Think smart contract police. And they are the largest provider of data feeds. And they service over 500 smart contracts, dApps, and decentralized exchanges, which is an incredibly powerful ecosystem. Uh, they are very interoperable, just like HTTP. And uh, public reference data, they provide 116 different price feeds, and it's probably even larger now today. And they have the largest set of data sets that can be connected anywhere where they're on or off chain, which is very, very important. The other thing that's really cool about this too, because a big growing area is online gaming and gambling, but how do you trust something? Well, they also have a capability around decentralized RNG, and VRF, and RNG is random number generation, for example, a deck of cards. And VRF is verified randomness function. And these are critical for things like dApps and NFTs and online gambling, so you can trust the cards you are being dealt. So fascinating uh, feature and functionality. And again, very, very important for the future. Now let's look at value propositions. So their core value proposition is having the most trustworthy data that they can deliver to customers. And being trustless is completely key to their operation. Now, chain links and center structure also creates network effects that attracts these very reliable, trustworthy node operators, which is critical to the operation. And that is really the crux of their entire value prop is if anything couldn't be trusted the whole value of the entire business could fall in the water very quickly. Let's look very quickly at technology and developers. They invest very heavily in the community grants program. They also invest in what they call Link Marines, which is their uh, outspoken uh, promotion vehicle on social media, which is very important. And their grants program also supports integrations with key uh, pro other projects and partners with Solana, Avalanche, OKEx, etc. So big community, big development, and lots of money in the war chest to invest in things like integrations and other further development. So let's look at tokenomics real quick. The link token demand, obviously, uh, the data requester pays oracles for fetching data in link. So that's one way in which people are actually paid. And second of all, the oracle puts link down as collateral to guarantee the reliability and uptime, which is very important. But these two together drive a demand for the token, obviously. There is also a fixed 1 billion token supply of Link, and that will not be changed. And the Oracle operators that want to use Chainlink as an Oracle have to link, have to acquire Link to lock it up as collateral. And this creates a deflationary pressure on the Link supply, which is very good for price. We like things that are deflationary, like Bitcoin back there. So let's look a little more into the tokenomics. So 65% of the initial supply was held by the team at Treasury for node operator incentives, which is very, very important. But as of 2021, only 42.8% of that billion tokens is circulating today. But it's important to know as well that that 65% is tightly held, which could be a problem, especially if a lot of tokens are dumped on the market but hopefully they'll be released gradually and use more or less as incentives. But always bear that in mind. Now, the ecosystem is extremely powerful. Their partners of note are big, big names. So Google Cloud, Google Cloud don't partner with any operation. They vet them very thoroughly. Same with Swift, same with New York Stock Exchange, same with Visa, PayPal. They also work with Ethereum, Polkadot, Synthetix, Uniswap, MakerDAO, and a whole bunch of other big names. Powerful, powerful, powerful ecosystem. Uh, let's look at the longevity and track record real quick. I touched on this before. Uh, the chain link has roots with Sergey from the smartcontracts.com company. It was founded in 2014, and that was the precursor to what is Chainlink today. 
basically the bridge between external data and public blockchains. 2017, they raised 32 million in ICO to solve the Oracle problem. And 2019, they launched their mainnet. So again, relatively new, but very well established in a very short window of time. Now, growth opportunities, which we always like to look at as well, Chainlink's growth is inherently tied to the growth of smart contracts and blockchain services. And we know, and you guys know from me, that this is a business and a space that is exploding exponentially right now. And as more services are developed, they will increasingly rely on oracles for data feeds. You know, I'll just step out for a second. Everybody's building smart contracts platforms. Ethereum is the 800 pound gorilla, but then you got your Cardano's and Polkadot's and everybody else, and they all need oracles to be able to pull off their story. And this is a big opportunity for Chainlink. So I'm probably gonna stress this a lot, but if you look here, the non-Ethereum based protocols that are building integration with Chainlink are names like Polkadot, Solana, Binance Smart Chain. I actually happen to own all three, coincidentally. So you can see kind of circling the wagons around this whole space is very near and dear to my heart. So risks, as always, there are risks. The centralized token distribution with the team and treasury are controlling that 65%, which is very, very large. So you always have to keep an eye on that. And there also could be a misalignment uh, between token investors, nodes, and users. And while it's good for investors, it could actually punish the us users by driving up the cost to consume data. So for example, if everybody starts jumping in and hoarding chain link tokens, there could be none left for the whole network to actually operate. So keep that in mind as we go forward. That is a potential risk. There is also token risks relegating chain link to a toll bridge status. And this could be susceptible to competition who are using non-token Oracle services. It could just be a straight fee paid in some other type of currency. And there's also a long shot risk here, but this is US Capital keep trying to sue Chainlink and they believe they can, will ultimately be classified as a security by the SEC and its founders to be prosecuted. But I think that's a very, very long shot risk. You know, the fact that they are registered in the Cayman Islands and they're not really a security per se. I think they're safe, but it's important to be aware of that and track the legal events happening as well. So right now, into the favorite piece, sorry for the little intro, but it's important that we go deep on all of these things, is we talk about the price prediction. So first of all, over the last year, <laughs> Chainlink went from four bucks to $52 and back to 16 over the weekend, and that's when I jumped in and bought some. So I was waiting to get in, get in to get some Chainlink for a while, actually, as I, even before I started doing due diligence on the actual token, but I always felt it was running too fast, too high. And I never really fully understood how big it could actually be until recently. But I was waiting for the price because I don't like to chase. And when I saw us back to the January prices, I said, woohoo, it looks like a good time to get some. So I did uh, over the weekend. So these dips can be very beneficial. Now, a few things I want to talk about is, first of all, I believe there is a very tight and visually there was a very tight link between Chainlink and Ethereum. What I mean by link is correlation. So Ethereum's up even after the dip, 1200% year to date. It was up a lot higher a few days ago. Um, link is up a modest 580%, but I believe their success is correlated and Link is lagging. Now that is gonna be a key linchpin to my pricing model as well. So first thing I look at is for the price prediction, I look at the Link to ETH ratio and historically the average is 0 0.02 Link to every Ethereum token. And I analyzed uh, the last three years of data to come up with that exact ratio. And based on my Ethereum price prediction of Ethereum at 8,900, for example, potential during this bull cycle, that could take us to a $178 link. But let me explain kind of a little bit more how all this works. So what I did was I looked at my historical price predictions for Ethereum year by year out to the year 2030. And I have three. I have my low Ethereum price prediction, my medium Ethereum price prediction, and my high depending on different scenarios. And I calculated that 0.02 ratio of link to Ethereum over my 10-year forecast. And that gives me link price predictions, again, 
You could call this crude. You could also call it highly sophisticated. But historically, they do track very closely. And none of this is outside the realm of possibility. So that would take us in my conservative model in 2021 year end, a $77 link price. By 2025, $179 link price. And by December 2030, $513 link price. Now, my medium scenario takes us $78, very close to this year, by the end of this year, $206 by 2025, and $686 by the year 2030. And if Ethereum completely blow it out of the water and revolutionize and disrupt many, many industries, we could see the price going a lot higher, 81 by the end of the year, 261 by the year 2025, and over $1,100 in the year 2030. So big, big, big numbers. Now, if you want to be ultra conservative, you could take all these and divide them by half. And that would be at the current ratio. If we go back a second, I want to show you this slide. This coincidentally, as I was putting this together, the ratio of link to Ethereum hit 0 0.010010. So I thought uh, that was uncanny. And part of my curse or what I do is I like to see patterns and I thought that was a very interesting number and pattern. So in other price predictions, I also weaved in one, two, three, four, five, six other models and created an average of them as well. So we have CP forecast, we've got Wallet Investor, Trading Beast, Digicoin, Coinpedia, Long Forecast, and I pulled an average of all of these and mapped them all out in a chart. And the average range for the year end of all of these is $51. And we were above that a, f a week or two ago. The 2025 average is $110. 2030 is $189. And what's really, really uncanny is for the first time over the last four or five token analysis I've done, my price prediction for Chainlink is actually a lot higher than any of the other analysts. So check back with me in the year 2030 and see how I got on. But I'm a big, big believer in smart contracts and this DeFi revolution that's happening. And I know that Chainlink will be part of it. The risks are there, like I discovered, but I think the upside is a lot more. So as usual, conclusions, thanks for sticking around here. First of all, Chainlink is critical to the DeFi smart contract space, which I believe is huge and it's going to be huge. And they fill that critical need of what I call policing the blockchain and tying smart contracts to off-chain and cross-chain data, which is absolutely critical. And they are the leader in the space by far. Chainlink's Oracle network is the most trusted and most reliable. Their moat is well established and it's hard to compete when they are you know, 12, 13 times larger than the next competitor. And when you, when you have something like a policing and regulatory system, you want the biggest and the best. You don't go cheap and that type of stuff. And uh, there are some concerns though regarding Chainlink's tokenomics, hurting its users by driving up costs. That is a consideration for the future. And I'm sure the team, Sergey, et cetera, know about that. But that's something that we see. And there are also concerns with the large token supply controlled by the team and supposedly secret sell-offs that happen. So... You know, there's as you dig into many of these different tokens, you, you look under the whatever it is you want to say, look behind the scenes, you will always uncover things that are a little bit scary and frightening. And that's one of the reasons why I love Bitcoin so much, because it's so transparent and so open. There's nothing behind the scenes and it's completely decentralized. And it's a thing of beauty. But at the same time, I believe Chainlink is one of the best ways to take part and jump on the train for this whole DeFi smart contract revolution. So not investment advice, but I jumped in big at the weekend. So I hope you guys like this content. Big thank you to everybody on Patreon. Again, uh, see you all in there every day. Hope you guys like this. And many people on Patreon were asking for this one. And I uh, hope you like the content. I'd appreciate a like or a thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed, please do. See you tomorrow. Thanks.